I mean, here we go on the, the beehives. Need to finish this project off. Still got the trailer ready to get out of the shop here in another day or two. So I'm just killing some time building some beehive boxes. I had a bunch of old sheets of, um, they were actually concrete forms, four by eight sheets. And so I'm just trying to repurpose them because I think at Home Depot in Grand Prairie, Alberta, a sheet of three quarter inch plywood is at least 70 bucks. So anyhow, I have that flow hive, which I'm gonna give that a try. And then I have bought some Langstroth hives and they are basically from China and I have been super impressed at the quality. And that um, flow hive only comes with this piece and the bottom piece. And so this is the flow hive part and that's basically just a deep box like for brood. And I think that there's a chance that I'm gonna need to put another brood in there so hopefully they make some brewed honey, put some honey in there for the winter. And then this would be the, the surplus honey because I don't want to steal all their honey. Anyhow, I had bought one of these, I forget where from, like a, a PV Mart type of thing, supposed to be Canadian built. And then I bought another one and I think they are complete junk. I have been trying to match them pieces up because you can see here they're not even lining up. So there's going to be gaps and... Uh, just frustrating. Plus, they all need to be dipped, so I am not happy with the quality. I'm way more happy with this, and I'm not finger-notching them or anything. I'm just drilling them, drilling the holes, and countersinking them, and then just putting screws in there. And you're going to laugh. Like, for now, what I had done is I was, I was going to put these strips for handles on there, but then I was worried about moisture right? Just getting trapped. And so I was going to put these across like that. So I'd have a place to lift. And then I didn't like that. So then I was just going to go with the smaller handle. And then same thing. I thought it was still going to get a bunch of moisture. Didn't like that. So then I'm trying this and I didn't stack a bunch of blades and do a dado blade. I just mark it two inches down, mark the center. And then, <clears throat> um, Oh yeah, I tried this and it didn't work. I thought it was actually gonna work. Um, but this is more meant for metal. And so then I just took the, the piece off of my router, my hand router, safety third, right? So anyhow, I just basically put this piece down on there and then I start grinding away at it. And then it leaves the top on a little bit of an angle. So then I just come in and trim that down. And the idea is, is if there's water sitting here, it's just going to run down and not get trapped. Plus, when I dip these so that I can dip all the edges um, with wax, then, then these will all be wax dipped too. So hopefully they'll stand up. And um, I'm just getting ready to crank out. So one sheet, uh, a four by eight sheet, I basically set the table saw this was my first set of notes as I was getting ready to build one and, and just do a prototype. So remember when you're setting your, your table saw, your nine and five eighths, and, and I call that a net cut because I don't want to include the blade. It needs to be nine and five eighths um, without the saw blade cut, without that extra eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch, whatever it is. So I go ahead and cut four strips out of a four by eight sheet of plywood lengthways, so the eight foot lengthways. I end up with four strips out of that sheet and then I end up with one leftover strip. And oddly enough, I think, I actually wonder how much, I need to measure that. I, Cause I ended up cutting this strip six and five eighths and I think I was left over with that strip. And then I can use that piece to make a medium box, right? Cause they're so, so it, it's not much waste. And then I'll get going on a few of those mediums. I can build one, two, three. I have a four to put together there. That's the fourth one. And then that would be the fifth and the sixth box once I make the ends. And so one sheet of plywood, I will have to just focus on making the end pieces or whatever, but there's not much waste. I'm trying to keep it that way. 
And then after that, you set the table saw to 19 and 7 eighths. And then basically you take your eight foot strip and you run it this way now. So it's hanging over the edge of the table saw that way. And you cut these 19 and 7 eighths or 19 or yeah, sorry, 19 and 7 eighths. And that's a net. So again, you're not including the blade on that cut. And then you'll get three side pieces out of one of those and then set the leftover strip to the side. And so then go ahead and cut all the four strips that you had that way. So you'll end up with 12 side pieces basically. And then you set the table saw to uh, 14 and 5 eighths. Now these are the end pieces. So you take them leftover pieces that you had uh, from step two and you'll get two end pieces with just a very little bit of, I think that's the little bit of waste, with a little bit of waste. Then after that, you step four, set the table saw blade to a height of five eighths of an inch. Now I actually use this and I set this, I measure it, I get that set to five eighths of an inch and then I actually set that there and I put the blade down so that it's underneath of that. So I know it's exactly five eighths of an inch. And then I run my guide in my fence to three eighths of an inch. Now this is three eighths of an inch, including the blade. Okay. And then you take, you take your board <coughs> like this. And at five eighths of an inch, you run it through this way. Five eighths of an inch and three eighths of an inch. That's three eighths of an inch. That's five eighths of an inch. Then you run all your boards through, all your end boards through that way. Set them aside like this. And then step five, you lower the blade height to three eighths of an inch. So, and use your, use your caliper, get it accurate, three eighths of an inch. And then you move your guide out five eighths so that it's five eighths, including the blade. So use your caliper again, make sure that you're bang on and then take your sheet and you set it down, right? Cause the first cut you did like this. Now the next one, you want to lay it down like that. So the blade is now three eighths of an inch high and your guide is five eighths of an inch over. And then you run these over like that. And then that little sliver will come popping out of there. And then when you build your box, <clears throat> that's the end piece that goes like that. I drill them all in from the end, four screws per one. And then your, your frame, you basically made this rest of course, the sun has to be bugging me. Okay. Perfect fit. And these are a 10 frame box. Okay. So you got the gap at the bottom for the bees to move around. It, it's perfect. So again, the one thing you're trying to do is, is make sure that your box stays square. If I, if I wanted to, I probably should build a, a jig that I could just pop all these sheets in, drill the holes, screw them. I'm, I'm not quite there yet, I'm gonna crank, but I do check them a little bit with the speed square. So, I mean, they're pretty, pretty good. They're decent, I've stacked them up on top of each other. Life is all good that way. So, oh, I didn't think I'd belabor this too long, but I'm already at nine minutes. So I'm gonna cut some boards and then um, I'll just kind of fast forward through that and see where we end up. Just a quick side note, when you're working with tape measures, I've got all my tape measures hanging here and the one I'm using, so I'll grab a Milwaukee. <clears throat> Do when you're doing all this stuff to try and use the same equipment. So I'm using this older Stanley tape measure. I just liked it and so I'm using it for everything. Now when you pull out a tape measure, <clears throat> You are checking to see if there's, you see how tight I'm trying to move that back and forth and it's super tight. Now this one, it actually has 
probably a good 16th of an inch. So what I've done is most of my cuts, I'm pushing that into the fence to the guide. And so then I've taken my calipers, I've set it on one inch, and I have checked to make sure that that is actually one inch, okay? Because when you're cutting these things at 19 and 5 eighths and you're trying to get them so that there's not a whole bunch of gap, you are trying to just do the best you can. It's good to be aware of some of them little tips and tricks, I guess. And then you can measure your fence when you first start out. Because sometimes if you are on different table saws, this one's a rigid, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and it doesn't go like that. Some of them do. And so when my dad taught me how to use a table saw, you would, you would measure from the fence to some point. So right now, if you're four, four and seven eighths there, you would double check and make sure that you're four and seven eighths on that point too, just to make sure that you're not cutting boards. Cause if you do, then, then them aren't gonna sit flat. They're gonna be off kilter. So just a few little things. I think I'd read something too. A table saw, I'm not sure if there's an accident every nine minutes in the world, it's crazy. So I always, when I'm cutting thin slips, strips, I make sure I have a push board kind of thing. Uh, I just, I do make sure that I'm careful. Okay. So we are left over with a nine and a quarter piece, which isn't the nine and five eighths to make another super. So I'm gonna cut the strip off. And because these were form boards, they have these cuts in there. So I'm gonna move my tables off to, that was six and, six and five eighths. Remember, don't include the blade. So six and five eighths, and then I can use these for my medium boxes. It's very little waste so far. So now we're on to uh, step two. So we've got our four strips out of the plywood. We've got the one strip that we cut down the six and five eighths to make mediums with later. We're left with a couple inch strip, um, but hopefully we can use that for bottom boards or for a lid or something like that. So I, I, there's still lots of uses for it. So now we're gonna do 19 and seven eighths, and that is not including the blade again. 19. Seven eighths. And we're going to get three 19 and 7 eighths pieces, and then we're going to have a leftover that we're going to cut on the next step for the ends. Okay, we're on step three, which is cutting our leftovers, and they're 14 and 5 eighths, not including, not including the blade. So 14 and 5 eighths. Okay, so we ended up with eight and boards, and there should be 12, yeah, 12, 12 sideboards. So we'll just set these into our pile of sideboards.
Okay, now we are step four, blade height to five eighths of an inch, and we need a three eighths of an inch depth, including the blade this time. Okay, so now remember, hopefully I can show this because I don't have the camera facing me. I don't use my five eighths of an inch down there because it's hard to see, it's whatever. So just grab the tape measure anywhere up there and then you want to set your caliper to five eighths of an inch. Okay, so I just use the five as the zero, then I run it down, so that's perfect. So then I just take my table, and I make sure the tip of the blade is at the high point there. Okay, and I know it's perfect. Five eighths of an inch. Now I need to find three, three eighths of an inch. Okay, and now that's including the blade. Perfect. Now I want to run all these boards through because um, I don't want to have to, 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 to redo this till I do the side cuts. And ideally, if you had four sheets of, of plywood, you would cut everything and then move to the next step, cut everything, move to the next step. That way they're all the same. I'm just doing one sheet at a time uh, for today until I train Shane up to run the table saw and then he can bring over six sheets and make big piles of everything and then it should be more uh, streamlined. Okay, so last step, step five, set the blade height to three eighths of an inch and set the guide five eighths of an inch, including the blade. And then you lay the board down flat. Now remember, we, we didn't buy a new sheet of plywood, so both sides of the plywood are not the same. Um, this side's been sprayed because it was a foreign board forever with like an oil preservative or whatever, so the concrete didn't stick to it. I want that to the outside and want that to the inside. So I need to make sure that when I cut these, that this is the three eighths of an inch that I'm cutting off, right? Cause that's going to be the inside and that's where, um, the rest of the frame is going to be. If I cut this side off, well then I would have to put it to the inside and that would, is not what I want. Okay. So we left this at three eighths of an inch cause that was our last one. So we don't need to find that. Again, we can just know that, and that was going to be our blade height. So we'll go ahead and find our blade height. Again, make sure the tip of the blade is at, is at the high point. Okay, and then go ahead and find, I actually probably could use even this on the, Yeah, that's better than holding the tape measure because there's a tape measure on the side of the table saw. I'll just double check it again with one tape measure that I'm using for everything. This is the same as the tape measure. Okay, so now we want to include the blade. We have the height. Now we're moving over, including the blade. Perfect. Now remember, New piece of plywood, you would pick the side that you want to be outside, whether it's got some knots in it or splits or w whatever reason, just make sure that, that well, outside is facing up.
So oddly enough, because you're trying like for the waste thing, I went and got a bunch of plastic excluders. I'm gonna scrap this off the. That would be the one downside, I guess, to these like these Chinese beehives. Again, they're great. Um, all the frames have been great. Everything's been good, but they come with that plastic. Now in the summer, if that droops down on your, um, bear with me. I'll set the phone down for a second. If this gets hot or you see how it could rest right down on there. So maybe I didn't measure this, but because we don't like waste, what if we put this like that, right? Because our frames that are going to rest above here, they have a little bit of room where they land. So the bees can still get underneath. And then that way the queen can still come up and go over top. So I, I think them will work as spacers. Oh, that's my 3D printed um, frame. I did a video on that. I'm not sure if I posted it or not, but anyhow. So yeah, no waste. So now we have all of our side pieces cut. Make a pile of them, and then it's just a matter of uh, screwing into them and um, with the, the reset or whatever, putting them together. And then after all the boxes are together, move them over here, and then we'll make the handles kind of. Don't make money for that. I'll keep thinking of better ways to make the handles because that's probably the one thing I'm not overly happy. And then after that, again, they need to be dipped uh, with a lot of this equipment. And so I don't want to paint them all. I think I would just as soon dip them. So that's what this is about. Got my metal skill saw ready and I'm going to start cutting and then fabbing together. They keep saying stainless steel. I don't have stainless steel. I have some sheets of steel around and I hope that that doesn't cause me any issues because it's going to be stored inside as far as rust and stuff goes it's not sitting outside so we'll give that a go i'll make another video with that and again hopefully this is long 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 but hopefully it'll help somebody